So we've installed vCenter. Now we want to connect our ESX host to that vCenter because the whole goal for vCenter is so that we can manage multiple ESX hosts. So I'm going to use my vSphere client. Again, it's the same vSphere client we're going to use to connect to the vCenter as what we use to connect to the ESX host. This time we're going to use the IP address of 10.1.1.2 and we're going to use administrator as opposed to root. So here we go. Administrator, capital P at SSW0RD. And we should be able to log into our vCenter server. Now, when we log in, we're not going to have any ESX host currently connected to the vCenter, so I need to connect the host. But before I can connect the host, I need to create a data center. So this data center is just a management realm. So we'll click New Data Center, and you know I'm just going to call it Data Center 1. Now this data center uh, allows me to place ESX host into that data center for management purposes so that I can say, you know, I've got a, a northeast data center, a southeast data center, maybe a, a western data center, an eastern data center, maybe a, you know, a Florida data center and a, and a uh, Georgia data center. So it's going to allow me to segment my ESX host in whatever way makes sense to do so. Now we can right click and select add host. And at this point we can either type the IP address of the ESX host or we can type the actual fully qualified domain name. And I really prefer the fully qualified domain name, myesx.com. So esx1.myesx.com. Now we just logged into vCenter using administrator, but we're going to connect to that ESX host using the root account. Now basically this question is who has authority to join this ESX host to this vCenter? You don't want just anybody being able to do that. So we're going to use root. Now of course if I had a user account on that ESX host that had full authority, well we could use that as well. Now what's going to happen is whenever I select this, it's not going to use root every time to now communicate with this ESX host, but rather it's going to create a brand new user account that only the vCenter and the ESX host know the password. So it's a VPXA account basically, and it's going to allow the ESX host to be managed by the vCenter server. So we'll click next. Now just like we've been seeing, everything's going to operate securely between the ESX host and the vCenter. So it's saying, hey, I, can't, I don't recognize this certificate. Yeah, we know what we're doing. We're going to go ahead and click yes. And from that point forward, it's going to remember that, cert that certificate and that will protect the communication between the ESX host and the vCenter. So now we're going to go ahead and click next. After that, we have the ability to assign a license key. And we would just enter the key here. But we're not going to do that. We're going to continue using the evaluation key. So we'll go ahead and click next. Now, data center, that's where we want to put it, place it, so we'll do that and finish. And at this point, we're going to see at the bottom that it's starting the process of adding the standalone host. Now, in a real environment, this will take anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. In here, it could take up to a minute in our environment, but it's, it's looking like it's moving pretty quickly, so I expect it to go ahead and finish. Once it does, we'll be able to see this ESX host. Right now, it's grayed out because it's not fully connected. So now that we have our ESX joined to the vCenter server, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the VMs that are running on that ESX host. And here's the server 2003 that we built, and we're able to, we note that it's already paused from where I had previously left it. So if I right click and select power on, we can go ahead and power on that VM. At this point, we, we're going to have a fully running VM running on the ESX host uh, that's joined to my vCenter server.